Hello friends, today we're gonna sketch and paint this adorable little yellow lab puppy. I've actually done this one before. I did this painting about three years ago and I've had so many people ask for a tutorial. Now I wanna show you the original photo that I was working with. I actually got this on Pinterest and I couldn't find the source of this photo so unfortunately I was unable to credit the photographer. So whenever that's the case, it's a good idea to change quite a few things from the original photo just so that your deviation is quite obviously a painting and not a total knockoff copying can get a little tricky that way so try to make some changes when you do a painting from a photo that's not your own and you're unable to credit if you take a look at these two side by side you can see that I added quite a few highlights in my painting to the puppy's eyes and I also brightened up the whiskers and I changed the pose of the body the only thing that's really the same is the coloring and the tilt of the head everything else is pretty different so we're gonna recreate this one again and we're gonna do a full sketch and painting now, of course, anytime you recreate the same painting again, chances are it's gonna look a little bit different, especially if you're using the wet and wet technique. So we can fully expect that a second version of this painting is not gonna be identical. Not to mention, this was three years ago, so my painting style may have changed quite a bit since then. We'll have to see. All right, so for your colors for today, you're gonna to want indigo. I use Daniel Smith indigo. It's a little bit more like Payne's gray and less blue than other brands. I'm also gonna be using yellow ochre, transparent brown oxide, possibly some turquoise blue or ultramarine blue, it depends on what I'm feeling. <laughs> and then I'm also gonna be using some white opaque paint for the little whisker details at the end. This is my Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. It's a perfect opaque paint for those tiny whiskers and highlights. All right, so make sure you have your paints all set up and your water. Have some paper towel for blotting, that's very important. A pencil for sketching, and then the brushes I'm using today are my Silver Black Velvet size eight and size four round brushes. And then for tiny whisker details, I'll be using this teeny tiny Trakel. It's a 10 slash zero, tiny little brush. My paper is my Fabriano Artistico 140 pound cold pressed cotton watercolor paper. It's a five by seven inch block. This is the exact same paper that I used for the original version of this painting, with the exception that it's the vegan enhanced paper. It's slightly different. It's not identical. I'm not sure what they changed in the makeup of the paper, but the new version is just it's hard to describe, but it is a little different. It's not bad. All right, so I'm gonna set my original painting over here so I can refer to that, and I have the photograph in front of me. Let's start with the sketch. To begin, I generally start by penciling in the top of the head and putting little marks for either side of the ears. This will help me decide on the size and the overall dimensions on the page. From there, I can start to more carefully sketch the ears themselves. Here I'm checking the angle of the ears from my reference photo and trying to match that so that I can perfectly capture that adorable tilt of the head on the little puppy. Once the ears are in, I start to add everything in between those ears, the snout and the bottom of the head. I'm putting a little center line right in the middle of the head too, and this will help me with symmetry. Sometimes when you're drawing something at an angle, it can be a little bit tricky to get your proportions right just because <laughs> mentally we tend to want to straighten everything out. Here I'm roughing in the eyes and adding a center line between them. It's important to measure the distance between the eyes and check the distance between the eye and the ear, for example. All these little measurements are gonna be so helpful for getting the correct proportions. Now, I was actually struggling with the proportions on this one because of that tilt of the head. So I turned my canvas upside down and my reference photo, and this made it much easier for me to draw using more of the left side of my brain so that instead of seeing the subject and saying, oh, this is an eye I'm drawing or this is a nose I'm drawing, I'm actually just seeing shapes and distances between those shapes. And it sort of frees up your mind to be able to draw something more accurately without actually thinking about what it is you're drawing. So once you're happy with your proportions and you've got your sketch pretty good, you can flip it around again and pencil in some more tight details. Here I'm really carefully sketching the eyes. I wanna make sure I capture the highlights and the whites of the eyes. I am playing these up quite a bit in this painting versus the reference photo. So I'm copying from my initial painting for these details. There's also the body. I wanna make sure I sketch that on and change it from the reference photo so that it's sitting more upright. The only other details I add here are just some of the twists in the fur. Now to start painting, I almost always start with a wet and wet technique to get down some initial washes of color. So I use clean water, painting it evenly in a nice glossy or satin finish all over the surface of the paper, just avoiding the eyes and nose for now. My first color is yellow ochre. I swirl it around with some water so that it's a nice light value, and I start to gently smooth it out over the ears and across the face. 
Yellow ochre is a wonderful starting color for any tan or light brown animal. Notice how I'm carefully painting around some of those little eyebrows and any areas that I see in the reference photo that are more in the light. Highlighted areas, you do want to leave some of the white of the paper showing. For every watercolor painting you do, leave a little bit of the white of the paper because that will help accentuate the wonderful transparent nature of watercolor and really bring out the luminosity of the paints that you're using. Now I'm introducing some transparent brown oxide into the ears. Anywhere I see a few more midtones or darker values, I'm increasing the value between the eyes with that transparent brown oxide. I'm also painting that color in a nice light tinted wash between the eyes. Now if this video is moving too fast for you, I wanted to let you know that the full length real time version of this tutorial is available through my watercolor mastery membership. The monthly membership includes over 100 narrated watercolor tutorials, including a comprehensive 30 day course just for beginners. There are lessons on painting skin tones and fur texture and tons of fun painting projects for all levels. Many of the tutorials include drawing instruction, but they each come with a downloadable reference photo, traceable line drawing, and a complete list of supplies. I'll leave a link in the description below so you guys can check that out. All right, let's get back to the video. So for the second layer, I'm just continuing to add transparent brown oxide. As a substitute, if you don't have this color, you could also use burnt umber or burnt sienna. Any really nice chocolatey brown that you have on your palette will work just fine. This may take a couple of layers as you begin to increase your values. But don't go too dark too soon. It's much easier to creep up to your values slowly and gradually. Now looking at my original painting, I definitely see some hints of blue in the fur. And we also see that in the reference photo. I think I used turquoise blue. So that's what we're going to use for this second rendition. Make sure that you're using very light tinted washes. As always, we want to work our way up gradually to our darker values. And if you introduce too much of a bright color, especially a blue color, it's just going to look gaudy and too dark. So this wash is more water than pigment. But you can see the turquoise blue is adding a wonderful and much needed cool color temperature to our overall painting. When you introduce these pops of color, make sure to spread them all throughout so you have good color harmony. Once again, making sure that the values are really light and that I'm not over accentuating the blue too much. The next color I'm adding in is burnt sienna. This is a reddish brown or PBR7 is the pigment number for this particular pigment. And I'm also beginning to add some light suggestions of fur texture in the ears. When you're painting a dog with short fur, don't add too much fur texture. You can add a little bit here and there just to suggest the soft coat of the dog, but too much will make it look really scruffy. We want it to look like nice, sleek puppy fur. So just a little of that fur texture on the ear and in between the eyes. And then to help the top of the head stand out just a little bit, I'm adding a very light tinted wash to the top of the head, but there are gonna be some lost edges up there where the sunlight is hitting the head. We'll let the viewer imagine those edges. Now I'm introducing some pops of Hansa Yellow Light. I think the puppy needed just some more bright yellow. I want to show you guys an example of softening. I lay down a brush stroke of burnt sienna on the top of the nose, remove most of the paint, and then swipe along that edge to really help it soften into the painting. And then where you want to apply broad strokes of color, use the belly side of the brush. On the head and on the chest here, I'm using a combination of yellow ochre and burnt sienna just gently dabbing the paint where I want to darken. And on the underside of the chest, using more brown and some fur texture. For the eyes, I switched to a smaller brush. This is a silver black velvet size four round brush. And I usually start by outlining with a dark color. This is Daniel Smith Indigo and carefully outlining all of the little highlights that I see. From there, I can add some darker colors around the eyes using gentle side-by-side -side brush strokes to create fur texture. This helps those eyes feel more inset in the head. So you can see that this is a nice careful process of just gradually layering color upon color, working your way darker through soft, subtle, transparent layers. For the first wash on the nose, I add a nice tinted wash of indigo. While that paint is still wet, you can spread out the bristles of a brush or use a grainer brush to produce fur texture around the edge. You can also darken the muzzle, not only with broad brush strokes, but also with some fur texture so that it starts to feel soft and scruffy. Those whisker pads are just achieved with gentle blotting motions of the brush. And here we're just gradually adding some more texture to the face and darker values everywhere you see them in the reference photo. For the second layer on the nose, I'm just adding another wash of indigo and being more specific with my shapes so that I can produce the look of nostrils. And for the mouth, I use fur texture to create the look of a line where the mouth opens and some more of a scrumbling motion wet and dry to produce the fur texture on the muzzle. 
I don't know how many layers this is by now, but you can see we're just gradually building them up. I'm adding more burnt sienna and transparent brown oxide to the side of the head and the neck. And to really help those ears pop forward and feel 3D, you'll want to make sure that you're painting dark enough on the creases and the inner side of the ear. I'm continuing to darken the values around the eyes as well. And if for some reason some of your values do get too dark, you can always gently lift or scrape some of that color back out. That's what I'm doing here with a clean, damp brush. Now for the body, to help soften out all of those tones, I just take clean water and gently scrub across the body. And this is really effective for just softening out an entire layer without completely losing the details. For the final whiskers, I use my Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White and a teeny tiny liner brush and try to paint each whisker in one sweeping motion. With puppies, those whiskers are usually quite short, so don't go overboard with the whiskers here. You don't want them to look like cat whiskers. You can use your opaque white to add any other fur texture or little pops of white anywhere else in the painting. And finally, once the painting's completely dry, you can erase your pencil marks and there is the finished puppy. There we go. So let's check that out side by side with the other version. You can see they're definitely not identical. And again, these are about three or four years apart. So my painting style has changed a little bit. And also I think I may have used transfer paper to trace this one on. And as you saw, we hand drew this one, but I think they're both adorable. And you can fully expect that your version of this puppy will also look different from these, but that's just the nature of wet and wet and also the beauty of it. We all have our different style that we bring to watercolor and that's what's so wonderful about it. Thank you so much to my members who requested this Yellow Lab puppy tutorial. It was really fun to paint for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you in the next video.